Hi, Mace. Hello. Hi, we're going to go live in a second, I think. Okay. It says, okay, go. I've had the go. So, hello, everyone. Welcome to what I'm calling the most annoying chat uh, during Out of Focus Festival this week. Why is it the most annoying chat? Because other people's kids are really annoying. <laughs> so, I'm Beth and Alvin. Uh, from BBC Radio Wales and from Horizons Music Project. And the reason I've got a background is so that you can't see my chaotic house uh, full of kids stuff everywhere. So uh, to ignore that, I'd like to introduce our panelists today to discuss parenting and music. We've got Lisa Jane from Nine Bach from Bethesda today, based in yeah, Bethesda. Absolutely. And we've got Mace the Great down in Cardiff. Um, yep. And fairly new young dad, so we're going to have a voice of experience and a voice of uh, probably a bit of chaos, Mace. Looking forward yeah. to chatting to you both. And I'm kind of in between, actually. One kid, a little bit grown up and a li one little one. So I'm kind of in between the two of you. Um, we've also had lots of comments online all day about this topic. So it obviously struck a chord. I think it might be a subject that isn't discussed a lot when it comes to the music scene or our music lives and careers and opportunities. So I think it's really great that Focus Wales put this on and hopefully it's not gonna to be too annoying for people when we come to some anecdotes today. So Lisa, I'm gonna start with you because I think I kind of recall um, when you were writing some of your songs about childbirth, wasn't it? A, a transformative experience for you in terms of becoming a writer so the two things came together in quite a, a momentous occasion for you didn't they they did they did because um lucy my 11 year old was in my belly when i was recording our ever first album um uh, down in chris's studio down in cardiff bay um and that was kind of an album of folk songs that i sort of you know interpreted myself um, and then, yeah, I became a mum and, and I kind of had a kind of, yeah, had an euphoric birth in, in a sense, you know, everything went really well. It was really trippy and sort of, you know, all kind of uh, kind of quite like psychedelic in one way, which kind of, yeah, did inspire me. I mean, that incident didn't inspire me to write songs, but then I travelled to Australia and worked with First Nation musicians out in Australia who kind of, just like taught me about the land and just like, you know, that kind of energy and just like the amazingness of the dreaming and everything. And that's what what inspired me to write. But it also came hand in hand with being a new mum, I guess, because I felt like I had something to say. So it, it, in a way, it was the birth of my songwriting because I never wanted to be a songwriter. I love singing and I'm a singer. But I don't, you know, but but yeah, I guess having children made me want to say something rather than pass on other people's messages or, the, you know, our ancestors song. I felt that I had a, a voice or I, I had a duty to uh, to say what I wanted to say, because things had changed massively in my head. Things change. Everything changes when you have a kid. <laughs> oh. I can't hear. I've got no sound from Beth. I've got no sound from Beth either. Uh, yeah. I... Can't, Sorry. can't hear you, Beth. Can you hear me go. now? Yes. Um, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Mace. How does that ref um, kind of respond to you then? How are you, how are you finding the whole experience kind of changing you in terms of what you want to write about and how you feel about life? Yeah, well, I just think a big thing for me is like how my son's going to take it. So whenever I'm, um, whenever I'm writing, well, not so much when I'm writing, but when it's when it comes to looking back on the project as a whole, it's like. 
when my, my son grows up, he's going to take a look at this. So the messages I'm putting across and, you know, the, the things I stand for and stuff, it makes me think about that a bit more. I guess the responsibility then, you don't want him to kind of uh, look at what you're doing and, and f feel disrespected or something in what you're writing about. But you don't feel inclined to include him in or, or something about that experience in your writing? Oh, definitely, because it, you know, it's, it's a whole, it brings a whole new material in terms of what I've got to write about, because it's a new experience I'm going through. So I definitely include that in my writing now as much as I can. And it just comes naturally because it's like, that's what I'm going through at the moment. I was quite intrigued, actually. Um, so I've heard Lisa's songs, um, which really, really affected me. But I was, I was intrigued in thinking about the, some of the songs you're putting out at the moment are such a strong image, um, Mace. And I was wondering whether there was going to be like a softer image and something, you know, like a, a transformative kind of experience from it. Or do you feel like it'll be still as strong, this kind of uh, hard image that you portray sometimes? Do you think that'll still be there? I think that, that'll definitely be there. But in terms of versatility, you know, I definitely want to show that because I'm definitely capable of it. So... You know, you'll definitely hear different things from me, different different genres. Um, so yeah, I've got I've got a lot more to offer than what you've what I've put out there so far. I think it's good to be honest as well as artists, isn't it? To actually, the things that do in you know are surrounding our lives that they do come into for in everything you do and everything. Uh, that's one of the things about lockdown this year, the honesty and the interruptions and the chaos that everybody's experienced. You can't help but talk about it and mm. feel that it's become more part of, especially for me, my working life. Um, Lisa, uh, let's have a kind of look back then at those early days. And it must have been quite, um, there were heady days of touring and going to quite far-flung countries um, lots of international dates in those early days of being signed and then it would have corresponded with when you had very young children so how did you juggle it and how did you manage it yeah I mean I, I've never been so busy like as when I had kids like I'm a struggling actress and a struggling artist and then I had kids and then like my acting career took off and then we had an album to put out and we got signed by Real World and it all kind of went boom it all went mental but the, I guess I could not have do it could done it without the support of my mum and dad and my sister so the family like in that tribal way like I always say my kids are being brought up in the community in a tribal sort of family way because um, I'm so lucky I live five doors down from my mum and dad and ten doors down from my sister um, and, and I mean one of the most memorable moments for me was in latitude and Bet uh, Lucy was about six months old and my mum like mums want a push chair don't they they don't understand slings and carry <laughs> So my mum was like, give me a push chair and I'll be fine. She came with us. She camped for three nights, but she was demented about this push chair. I was like, you don't take a push chair to festivals. Trust me, carry her on your belly in a sling and I'll wrap you around in it and you'll be great. So I said, I don't want to see her an hour before I'm on stage and you can come to me straight afterwards because I was breastfeeding and everything. So I was like, you need to give me like an hour or two before the gig. And when she came back, she was like, yeah, 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 fine. So I, I kitted her in my, my carry me in the sling and strapped her in. And she came back five minutes before I was going on stage with like red wine tracks um, with a glass of wine. And the baby was down by her ankles, still in the sling, but just like strapped to her leg. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a whale of a time. I've met Lisa Knapp and I've met, met Lisa Hannigan and everyone's so kind in the backstage bar. I was like, mum, are you kidding me? Like my boobs are swelling, <laughs> my boobs are wet, swelling up and, you know, I'm about to go on and you're having a nice time with my child strapped to your leg. Like, Get out, you know. Um, but having a member of the family or, or, or a friend that, that is willing to just take your child off um, but and then I also remember uh, singing at the main stage at WOMAD Festival and all I could hear was my girls going, mommy, mommy. And it was a oh, huge man. sort of like, um, you know, high profile gig for us. 
uh, and all I could hear in the audience was just them both screaming like this <laughs> and my sister trying to keep them. So um, I think it made me quite ill, if I'm honest, like it did sort of like, because there's that thing, isn't it, of a performance, like it's got to be fine, it's got to be fine, be professional, be professional. Um, and there was this, and I think I've changed a bit now, especially during lockdown, because I've been performing with the kids because they we've been streaming from the house and they we couldn't have done it without them. So my nine year old's been directing like on multicam and my 11 year old's been like filming it on a handheld. So now, like, I think it's coming to somewhere quite nice now. But it, it's yeah, I think it made me quite ill that that need to be professional, but also you have screaming kids in the wings and it's like, where, what do you do, <laughs> you know? Um, um, Mace, yeah. you put a lovely picture out today of uh, an extended family picture. Do you have plenty of support around you then? If something came knocking, an opportunity, if you had to kind of jump and go and do a gig, you know, last minute, I mean, that, that's kind of not the situation or the scenario right now, but um, do you feel supported in terms of this young family? Uh, yeah, definitely. I definitely got the support from my family. My partner does a lot, even with the stuff I'm doing now with like, even through lockdown, like I'm still like going to studio as and when we can through the restrictions and, um, you know, I'm putting, I'm putting videos out and stuff. So that stuff takes time as well. So, you know, my, my partner's a big help and, and the family are definitely very supportive as well. So yeah, so it's always a helping hand to have, you know, a good family there. It was one of the comments today that came up online of whether the guys who are fathers feel the same sense of guilt. Lisa, when you said then about the girls in the audience kind of screaming your name, I've had one of my, uh, when she was a toddler, she was on the stage without me realising and I was hosting the stage and my youngest was at the back of the stage, like not even shouting my name, but just there. And the audience could see it, but I couldn't. And I, they were all laughing and I was trying to work out what they were laughing at. And then I turned around and saw this little toddler at the back. Mace, is that something you're looking forward to? Kind of being able to include your child in the activity, in the music, in the scene? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's uh, my son's only one and he's already been in a video with me. <laughs> so that's good. He's been in a music video, but I, I can't wait to like bring him to like a festival or something. I think when he's, you know, when he's old enough to understand what's going on, um, I think, yeah, I, I'll be looking forward to it. I think the, the whole festival scene is so unrealistic for our kids because they think now that that's how you do a festival. You get backstage area and you've got nice toilets and you get free food. And it's like, girls, this is not how to timbel mama or bob man kind of thing. When you go to the festivals on your own, when you're, you know, old enough, like this is, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, because they've, they've had that experience. They just think, oh, this is great. Um, so they'll probably just blag their way in if they're used to it, won't they? Yeah, possibly, <laughs> possibly. But when you think of like Glastonbury and Reading and Leeds and all these festivals in the 90s that you've had to trudge through and, uh, you know... The I, rites I, of passage. I think our kids would be, you know, they'll, they'll have a shock, shock of their life when they have to like climb over that fence to go to <laughs> Glastonbury. Oh, excuse me, everyone. Um, I'm going to read a couple of statements now from people who got in touch during the day and then we can react to people's stories. Uh, let me have a big cough first. <coughs> <coughs> so Ladies of Rage Collective um, talked about how important it was to have a, a really um, supportive community around you. So whether that's a musical community, a safe space for people to perform. Um, <coughs> Oh dear, hang on. <coughs> take your time, Beth. Lisa, you take over. I'm going to take a drink. Hold on. I'm going to take a drink. <coughs> uh, yeah, so that supportive sort of community is like, uh, yes, it's really important, but also it's not actually that easy for everyone either. You know, I don't know how how bands do it like it's all good and well me saying oh yeah my mum comes with me to festivals or my mum and dad will come with me to Australia and look after the kids but like how I think that's that network it doesn't have to be your family or friends I think as 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 musicians 
we should form that network, like, for example, in festivals, if you have to bring your kids and who and then you think who's going to look after your kids whilst you're on stage, then you have to bring someone with you. And OK, yeah, you might have a willing friend um, that that'll come for the free ticket or whatever. But it wouldn't it be great to have like a network of musicians also who are playing on the same day that will go like, you know, I can look after your kids and you can look after mine. You know, I don't know. Would we be comfortable with that? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it's a, a big thing for me that I've noticed since since becoming a dad is um, it's like I've got to I've got to plan things out. I, I can't just be saying yes to things. I've got to so I've got to plan things out first to make sure. Do I need to be here? Have I got a baby? What's going on? I need so that's one thing I've realised is like how I manage my time and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then when you have kids wearing in school hours as well, you realise that your working day has to be, be between nine and three and it's not long enough. You know, you're just getting a groove. You're just getting the hook down. <laughs> you're just getting something done and it's like 10 to three. No, you know, and you've got to just abandon ship when you're just getting into the groove. And that's like, that's pretty frustrating as well. But, I, you know, going back to that, like, is it okay to leave your kid with someone that you don't really know? You know, like, just because we're all musicians, it doesn't mean that we're all nice. <laughs> you know, mm. I don't know. I, I had to do it with Betsy when she was about three months old in um, Womex in Copenhagen. And I had to leave her with the, uh, the babysitter of this big hotel kind of thing. I mean, she came with us to the venue. But when I came off stage, she was just screaming her head off, you know. And everyone mm. in the band was like, Lise, how can you do that? And it was like, I don't know what else to do because me and my husband, their dad, is a, a, we're in a band together. So, um, yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's exactly. Hard. Yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know. How's Bess doing? Good. Oh, we can't hear you, Bess. You're on mute. I you think you're still on mute. Still can't hear you. Try again, Beth. Right, is that there better? You there you are. Yeah. I've got too many mute buttons on the go here. Apologies. Thank you, Lisa. That was brilliant. I don't think I'm going to be able to read all these comments out, unfortunately, due to the fact that I'm uh, coughing and I've got yeah. sore throat. Hopefully not more serious than that. Um, but it, the, there were so many amazing comments and I'm just going to, I will try and just have a look to see if there's a couple of bullet points I can pick out from these um, comments. Stacy mentioned that she was DJing right up to past her due date with both her girls. Um, she was comfortable and safe doing it, but she got very mixed reaction from the public and from punters. The only times I felt uncomfortable it was other people's assumptions and opinions. Um, I wonder what you both think about that. Let's just have a, a quick reactions and then I'll pick a couple of other comments. Yeah, gosh. Um, I mean, how could you be judgmental of a beautiful pregnant lady behind the decks? I mean, uh, you know. Um, I, yeah. Is it the environment? It's the nighttime kind of nightclub environment that she would have been in. But, you know, I've seen, uh, especially in festivals, it kind of opened it up a lot more that loud music and you'd always see these uh, trolleys of little kids kind of sleeping in their carts. Um, I'm not sure. I was always comfortable with it, with very young babies in loud music environments. Obviously, when, when someone's pregnant, the baby's in the womb. So it's quite, I remember going to see Public Enemy when I was pregnant and it was just an amazing experience. Um, loud music and pregnancy kind of goes together quite well, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a brilliant experience. But I can imagine people's uh, reactions uh, Mace, you're staying very quiet on that one. I'll just pick out some <laughs> more. Um, and huge thanks to everyone who got in touch today. Uh, Gemma, Missy G from Ladies of Rage. She talked about the guilt she felt leaving her daughter to go out to perform, but also just how amazing it was to find the Ladies of Rage. And they did daytime jams, which makes her feel that her daughter's grown up in a much safer environment in terms of seeing music and um, a collective of people who are kind of strong characters is a good influence. 
Um, that's another thing. So Mace, I'm going to start with you on that in terms of environments being safe for young people. What do you think about that for girls and for boys? Yeah, I think that's something that's very important, definitely. I definitely think that's... Sorry, yeah. Yeah, uh, I definitely think that's something important. And um, I can also understand the guilt side of um, when, you know, when you have to leave to do certain things, especially when you reach the, the point where it becomes like, you know, your livelihood, your job. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's very, it can be tricky, I think. Okay, I've got another comment here from... Um, this is quite interesting from Francesca Dimech, who said that she's 36 and not a parent, but she always felt that she couldn't have kids because she wanted to be a musician and out playing. Um, her family always told her it was one or the other, and she took it to heart and purposely blocked out any broody feelings. She says it's really inspiring to see so many uh, awesome mamas doing both brilliantly and hearing such positive stories. Lisa, what do you think about that? I, I can I can totally relate to that because, like I said, I'm not going to um, glamorize or gloss the fact that you know taking your kids to festivals is an amazing thing. Of course, it is, but also your mind, like what I always think, what I put myself through mentally. Not physically as well, because you you don't only arrive in a festival with all your camping gear and all that chaos, and then you've got amps and guitars and pianos and everything. Like so, the 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 chaos of it all, and you have to be professional uh, and possibly do two or three gigs over that weekend or whatever. It it's really damaging. It really is. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. You know, it's um, I I come from some gigs like a shell of myself um i mean also more um sort of uh you know um uh, what's the word uh, relevant to now as well as we've been live live streaming from the house every week in lockdown and we depend on our kids to do it to to film it and to be directing it and every single gig we've done, they've argued and I'm in the middle of the song and then I open my eyes and then I, you're not selecting my shot and all this chaos is going on and someone's sulking and walking out the door. And then you realise you're live on Facebook and there's about 500 people watching, which is more than you usually get in a normal gig. And you just think you get in this rage but actually they're kids, it's okay. And they're in their own house. So the juxtaposition and the, and the, the toing and froing in your head, what I've realized is that being a musician is extremely selfish. You, you, you know, you're, you're selfish and you're self-centered and you can't always give to your kids when you're, when you're like that, but they need you. So it's, it's really, ah, you know, it is. To be I fair. think that, that issue about being selfish is true about any job whatsoever. They are going to want your time 100% of the time, all the time. And yeah. whatever you do, I think that's never, there's never my, an easy balance. No, and my kids have started saying now, like, I don't like it when you wear makeup. And um, um, hang on, I can hear my husband talking. Matt, I can hear you, Kariad. Do you mind closing the door? Um uh, when they when I put makeup on, they're like, we don't like you looking like that. I'm like, why? You look mean. It's like, why? Because I've got eyeliner on and a red lipstick because and they m managed to vocalize. It's because when you dress like that, it means you're in I'm on stage mode. And so they've started to like really like when I when I've got the makeup on, which is not often it only when I'm performing, they're like, mm, don't like that. Don't like you looking that like because it usually means you're going to be cross with us or be quiet or mommy needs to concentrate. Do you know what I mean? So it's, I think it's an amazing like. They're so, so they're associating you working with being cross and yeah. bad tempered. And I can relate to that. Definitely. So I don't um, know whether it's like it's that's like the same with every job. Do you know what I mean? That, that, that self-centeredness of something like you know, I've got to look like this and I've got to, you know, whatever it is, um, not have you around. And it's not normal to be like that with your kids. Yeah. Can I just ask the moderator to let us know with the time. I can see that we've 
been on the clock for a little bit. So if you could just give me a little time check, that'd be great. Um, this is a really interesting comment from Martin Kinya said he's a bedroom producer. He found that one of the things parenthood has affected is the speed at which he can work. So he finishes tracks a lot faster. Um, and I love this comment from him. He says, if the kids are asleep early, the takeaway delivery is on the way. I sometimes use that time, open the laptop, get it done. Um, I like the fact that it's not just the kids that's distracting. It's the fact the takeaway is on the way, Martin. Um, Mace, I'm going to throw that one your way. Are you working faster now that you've got other things going on in life? It might have been yeah. the time that you were in the studio all day long and now that maybe that's not the case. Yeah, definitely. Like you're more efficient with how, you, how you're spending your time and, you know, you get things done. So in terms of... Um, you know, if I've got to get a song done, I'm getting it done, but it's in the time, it's in the free time I've got. Like very, like I can't do it when my son's awake running around. I've tried, but it just don't, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so um, yeah, definitely being more efficient with your time. I think it comes naturally that when you're like, well, when you're the artist or the musician, and then you have like um, a baby get put into the picture and it's a, you know, it's a massive priority. Naturally, it comes, it comes naturally to you. Um, we've had a nice comment in the chat from Kendall. Uh, he says, I'm manager of Single by Sunday. I toured internationally through four kids. Hang on, let me see. Um, through four kids growing up, but was a stay-at-home parent when I came back I got to share a lot of memories but also lost out on a lot of memories yin and yang um I think that's uh, quite a, well up until this year when touring and that kind of scenario was cancelled um I think that's quite a common story isn't it in terms of the music industry that you have large chunks of time with the family but also I I, I got the sense from a lot of friends who were in the music industry in terms of the technical side that it's also a massive adjustment when you get home to kind of the chaos of family life and a massive adjustment to the family that have got used to that person being away as well um sarah's been in touch actually she says she's due in seven weeks time congratulations sarah did you take maternity leave in any way shape or form as self-employed working musician um lisa i'll let you answer that one no, um, no, and yes, in a way. So, if so, for example, I think when Betsy was, I think she was like a month, and I she was tiny. I remember being on my own in Manchester Airport. Uh, I had to go out to Copenhagen and and toured and stuff. But then I guess then you you have like six months of doing nothing, and then a gig offer comes. So I think I just took took the gigs and took the work when I could. I remember being in Celtic Connections as well with just like this tiny baby head. I remember my mum coming up with us again and being highly inappropriate and bringing her when I didn't, I couldn't, be, you know. <laughs> so I, yeah, I don't know, I, I didn't, I didn't because you can't pick and choose, can you? Like when a tour offer comes or a gig offer comes or a great festival you wanna do, you just have to do it and not, I did never, I never thought, I won't do that for now. Hopefully I'll get a chance next year because it doesn't work like that. I, I think I just, mm -hmm. I just took it when I could. Even. And also, I guess it's up to the individual, but should there be um, more provision for musicians or people working in these kind of technical jobs for this kind of situation? Because we want to encourage more women to get involved in the technical side of touring and the music industry. Um, this question from Fiona said, why shouldn't musical workplaces consider children when other workplaces do? Why is there a lack of baby changing facilities backstage at festivals in the working areas, not the VIP areas? Um, so, I mean, I remember Fiona touring and with really large international bands when uh, she was heavily pregnant and I think enjoying it mostly as an experience, but finding it difficult then with a small child and going to the same places. I think it's hard to give, you feel like you've got to give up that life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's different for you, Lisa, as a singer and a performer, it is your life. But when you're just maybe even a musical fan or a technical side of it, I think there's a huge question about whether you continue to do that same job. Um, 
any thoughts from either of you in terms of what what the provisions are and what the um, support what support there is for people working in music? Well, I mean, yeah, tour, touring's hard, isn't it? If you want to tour with kids and you get to venues and you're lucky if there's a rider there ready that you can feed that, you know, but I think because at the moment you have to just make do of changing kids on a, on a towel on the stage or whatever it is. And for me, that was okay because I'm like quite rough and ready and do, it'll be fine. But a lot of my... Um, friends and, and mothers uh, would, wouldn't even dare of putting a baby flat on its back on a stage or whatever on a towel or like I, I think you know and, and and that's fine too so what provisions are there for for like you know like I say like you know cha baby changing facilities and stuff but we mentioned earlier I mean I'm not aware that festivals I mean touring's hard because venues are venues but I wonder whether it, there is childcare facilities backstage for bands at festivals I mean that would be amazing wouldn't it I've never heard of one I've never heard of it but I think it's something we could um, instigate a call to people in the industry after this discussion um, this is interesting as well from Luke who got in touch today he said he used to play in Cardiff band okay before he had his first child at the young age of 22 we would practice so much record as much as we could and gig up and down the country I found it so hard with sleepless nights, working a full-time job and trying to dedicate the much needed time to be an active part of the music scene. Um, one of the points he makes is that he became, he had to back off because he couldn't keep up with the pace of what the band wanted to do. And he felt he became unreliable. Um, no, child for, no child care for gig, cancelled. Um, two little ones, sickness before practice, cancelled. He said, after years of being a dependable, committed musician, I was letting people down. So he stopped altogether. But then, so there's another massive point that trying to get back into it when the kids are a bit older. He's only 32, children are a bit older, but he's finding it difficult because the whole thing about new music is people's age and get into it while you're young and promoting new music while people are young. So he's finding it really difficult as a older musician. And I say that it's still very, very young, but we do know that in uh, the shallow world of the music biz, 30 plus is uh, considered older. But Lisa, I mean, you might have a point about that because I guess as a band, things have been quite a slow evolving situation for you guys. Oh my gosh, yeah, really slow. I'm 41 now and, you know, it kind of took, took um, what's the word, took off, you know, a few years ago, like in my late 30s, in the very age that you're having kids and, and sort of, um, yeah, it's a shame that, isn't it? And it, is it is it, because us as listeners and fans can cope with it. Is it not, is it the industry that's telling us, oh, nah, they're past it, you know, what, I mean, it's, Oh yeah, it, yeah, it's 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 really difficult, and I guess it's up to us, isn't it, to just stamp on that and and just you know support and uh, you know. I I feel like expectations have changed a lot, like in the last even couple of years, in terms of you know things like age or appearance or genres or they're all stereotypes, aren't they, of what we think music should be? Um, Mace, what are your thoughts? Do you feel like you have to fit into a certain pigeonhole? And in your musical genre, is being a young dad part of that? Are you allowed to feel like you can have that as part of your image? I think, um, well, I think in terms of my image personally, my image is, is, is based on my reality. So, you know, whatever my reality is, that, that's my image. And now I'm a dad, that, that becomes part of my image. Um, in term, I think it's it's very it, it is difficult. It is it is difficult, and um, for me personally, I think it's like anything. If you was doing boxing, if you was, you know, if you was an athlete of some sort, and you know, if you took a break to between the age of twenty two to thirty, then things are going to change when you get back into it. Understandably, so for me, it was a it was a case of. Um, almost like 
keeping my finger on the button through the whole process. When I like not not as hands on with the music, so through the process of my girlfriend being pregnant and us having to find a place and you know prepare for my son, it was like that was the main priority. But I still kind of had my 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 ear to the ground with the music and in order for me to be relevant and stuff in terms of what I'm writing and stuff. But yeah, I think um, I don't. It's it's. A, it's tricky. It's tricky. But then I think when I look at the, the, the people I look up to in terms of artists, they've got kids and done it. So at the, at the same time, I think, you know, everyone's human, like, and it can be done. So you just got to give it a go. And and also, I think in, ter in terms of that image, uh, like you say, things have changed. I, I've changed. So I welcome yes i love the glossiness of of and the the machine that is beyond cc and all that production and everything but i am more for like say christine and the queens who who's had it in the neck for being to this or not enough this or whatever and therefore i changed because i wouldn't have possibly five years of go come on a webinar with not an ounce of makeup on like it's really important to me as a mother and as an artist as well to to normalize everything so i remember uh someone wanting to airbrush the um album cover of tinkian i think it was i it's it's quite i'm quite it's, you know it's like not photoshopped and someone suggested is it i think we should maybe we could make you look a little bit more brighter and like get rid of them i was like no no not at all so like it's like it's like hard hard to go against that but i think when i scroll through instagram and everything like that is the normalizing everything that really makes me go i like you whatever age whatever you know size whatever anything like i'm gonna support you for being real and that i think that comes with yeah as well like a, a father you know being a parent is like we have a we have an absolute sort of you know responsibility as musicians as people in the public eye to be as you see us i think i think people like what they can relate to yeah so you know how many people go through life and have kids so you know by putting that into your art like people are going to relate to it who've had kids um, so I think, yeah, I think that's one thing I've learned in terms of when I write my music and stuff is like being true to myself and just remembering that people take a liking to things they can relate to. Mm. Mm. Nice. I completely agree. And it's funny that there's almost like an opposite movement going on at the moment where people's honesty and vulnerability and truth seems to be counteracting the glossy production values and there's been nothing more grounding than lockdown for that as well and one of my favorite things in lockdown was seeing Sophie Ellis Baxter's uh, kitchen discos and she'd have three kids basically jumping around behind her she was dressed to the nines like she was going to go on stage um so kind of kitchen production uh, in terms of lights, music, everything was uh, really super professional. And then the kids would be like kind of diving and hurting themselves in the background and um, she'd be ignoring it all, which is what I quite liked as well. And um, as a mum in the middle of that chaos, sometimes you do have to kind of go, I just want to sing and I just want to enjoy music. And it was really one of the loveliest things I saw was that her uh, carefreeness about being at home with her kids it was lovely um I'm going to go back to a couple of these comments um what about missed opportunities then um this is from Ed who I asked him to to comment because I know that he has to juggle being a father and a single dad uh sharing responsibilities but also as a job with being a sound technician and that means late night jobs and weekend and he said his daughter was born during the second year of uni he had his first paid events job the week after her birthday um, I had to take the job because it was my first in the industry and it set me up for the rest of my career being freelance or having a part-time industry job has aided me much better in situations in terms of seeing her but there are times where I've had to go away for a while 
and really miss being around. Um, he's questioned with family members and things whether he should pack in working in music because it's not a real job um, and I'm not providing for my daughter well enough. But he's been talked out of it by family members and people knowing how important it is for his own mental health uh, to be better staying doing the work that he loves. So uh, if there's so much has been unpacked in this discussion and in people's comments and involvement today. And I feel like it's interesting. I've been working with radio and festivals and things for 20 years and I've never discussed it with anyone. And is it the kind of one of the last taboos that we're allowed to talk about, you know, in terms of what people are and aren't allowed to be as a musician. Um, Andy from uh, Focus Team, I think, says really enjoying the discussion, totally get the struggle to find a balance. At the same time, I feel like there's such a big positive in showing our children that we're pursuing a career in the creative sector and of our choice because it's possible and they can do that when they grow up too. I struggle to find a balance though, so it's a work in progress. Absolutely um, that. And, you know, I've, I've, there's been moments where they're crying because I'm off for two weeks, Australia or something. Uh, and, they, and I've gone, that's it. I'm not doing this again. I am not doing this again. And then like, they'll go, oh no, no, we want you to still do it. That, that there's that I mean I, my kids are older they're 10 and 11 but they're old enough to go no we like you doing this um mm. and they can cope with it because I've involved them so much and they have been there and they you know they like the messages in my songs like they I, I'm seeing them becoming like strong sort of like you know women the young women that want to tell a story which I think is really important because that's what we're doing. That's what creative people do is to tell a story. And I think Andy's right in saying it's really good that they see us doing what we want to do. Um, and of course, as parents, we let them do what they want to do, providing they, they don't want to be musicians or actors. <laughs> no joking. <laughs> but like, you know, like it's, 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 it's true. It's just letting them see like, oh, I can do this. I can do that. Yeah, I think it sets an example for them. And I think... A it's so important to to wake up and be happy with with what you're doing. I think that's you know I'd rather I'd rather lose a little bit of money and wake up and be happy with what I've got to do throughout the day on a day to day basis than be than have all the money and literally hate what I gotta gotta do. Mm. I think um, I think that's what that, that's that's a big key. And yeah, setting an example, showing your kid, like showing your, your your kids that you know if there's something out there that you want to go for, like there's nothing stopping you. You just gotta you just gotta work hard. Mm, that's exactly it. You've got you've got to work hard and know that you're not going to be making a lot of money. <laughs> that yeah, it's reality. You know, it is um, at our level. I mean, you know, it's it's not easy, is it? Um, providing yeah. a living for the kids is. Um, quite an important theme I think that comes out in your work Mace that uh, especially your last track Brave um, what I would have done to have a decent wage it, it kind of <laughs> rings around in my head all the time <laughs> um, so it's more about the role model and the inspiration and just being able to be who you are and be kind of uh, be able to express yourself is important to show the children but like you said Lisa I think I've heard myself say no you don't want to do that <laughs> my eight-year-old wants to go into a musical theatre like, no no you, know, you don't want to do that <laughs> no you can be anything you want apart from a musician <laughs> so, uh, I don't mean about, that but <laughs> I think maybe because the struggle is real and to do a creative job is probably one of the hardest avenues these days and there's no rhyme or reason to what is successful um at the end of the day is that oh I just want to um I guess we're coming to the end of our hour many thanks to everyone who's been in touch on the webinar I know lots of people want to watch this back and thank you so much to um Mace and Lisa Jane and everyone who commented earlier today I didn't even get through everybody but uh, I just wanted to name check the the lovely eggs got in touch and just said how much they toured with their uh, child from when uh, he was a baby onwards. And it was just part of reality and part of them as a kind of unit. Um, and 
Mary got in touch as well, just saying that uh, her partner, Martin Carr, just gave up touring because he didn't want to be away from the kids. And there's just such a lovely sentiment. She's posted some hilarious pictures of them at festivals with um, little toddlers running around as well and turning up on stage. Um, thank you both so much for joining me and to discuss this. I feel like I just want to um, maybe after the seminar write down some of the questions that have come up in terms of what can be there to support people who want to do music, what avenues and websites and um, what questions should be put to these festival sites and places for musicians to feel safe and that they can turn up and there'll be plenty of support for them. So I mean, and, and if anyone can do a crash backstage, <laughs> uh, pioneering in it in Focus <laughs> Wales, I mean, only the best festival in the world run by amazing people. So I'm, I reckon Focus Wales could be onto something here for their next you know, when they, yeah. And, and I think it's a question for promoters when they're thinking about events and making things accessible is a huge question. And it's not just about how people get there or how people access something. It's how safe they feel when they're in that environment as well, isn't it? And um, how we build up our music industry for everybody. So thank you, Mace. Have you got a parting comment about the chaos of parenting and music? <laughs> is Mace still there? Is he frozen? <laughs> um, Mace has left the building. Lisa Jane, parting comment from you? Um, just do it. Go for it and don't worry about it. Yeah, definitely. It's part of the fun, I think, and the charm. And I certainly kind of associate that with Nine Bach songs that it's part of the inspiration of what you do as well I think but I've loved your live lockdown blogs as well and the kids are certainly part of the, the world that you fill is just yeah. Taylor Quine all Taylor the way it was Taylor Quine and dogs and cats and everything <laughs> oh yeah even a pair of knickers on the floor my daughter managed to film <laughs> a very poignant song so yeah absolute chaos Lisa, thank you so much for joining me and thanks to Focus Wales for inviting us um, to do this panel. And if you have any questions or points or anything, uh, then do feel free to comment on Focus Wales's Facebook page or YouTube underneath this uh, film. But thank you very much. And thanks, Lisa, for rescuing me halfway through with a coughing fit as well. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye, everyone.